Joining me now, a man that lived a lot of what I just showed you, Fox News contributor, White House, uh, former Deputy White House Chief of Staff, Carl Rove. Carl, great to see you. Do you think that was an important trip down memory lane? Is it apropos for today? No, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, primaries can hurt parties if they become bitter and divisive, but people expect to, you know, they want to see how you're going to handle the controversy that you're going to see in a general election. And anybody who thinks that you're going to go into the general election and not be trading blows with the opposition is kidding themselves. Because, Carl, the other side is jotting this stuff down. So as George W. Bush would eventually be a two-term president, he's seeing the, move, the blows that McCain is landing. And when it comes to the general, Gore capitalizes on that. That'll happen again. Oh, yeah, but, but look... It's hard for, you know, it's, it's hard for a lot of these things that go on in primaries to, for, the Democrat, for the opposition party to pick up and run with it. Oh, you know, for example, when DeSantis hits Trump for not having completed the wall, that's not an issue that Joe Biden is going to take on in the general election, no sure. matter who wins. So, but, but yeah, I, I think the main thing, though, is, is that we learn a lot about the candidates by how we see how they trade blows. We get a sense of their character. We get a sense of their thought process. We get a sense of their inner strength. We decide whether we like them or not. Uh, and, and it's a helpful process. It can, it can go overboard. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there are, you know, the 1980 primary between Jimmy Carter and, and uh, Ted Kennedy, for example, left some real scars. Uh, but, uh, you know, th this is what we expect from our politicians. And by and large, it, it helps us better understand who they are and come to a decision as to who we're for. And I don't want to disrespect the rest of the field, but I'll just focus on this because DeSantis got in this week and they started throwing haymakers at each other. Trump goes after Ron on uh, not needing eight years. You, he said he needs six months. Showed anger at the press. Trump says you should never show anger at the press. And uh, he won't be second for too much longer. <laughs> DeSantis hits Trump. He didn't drain the swamp. Um, he should have fired Fauci. Um, he also, not a real Republican, has moved too far left. So these are some of the things going back and forth. Your thoughts? Yeah. Well, my personal favorite was uh, the, the, well, I had two favorites. One was the full-throated embrace by former President Trump of Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> Andrew Cuomo <laughs> did, better, did better on COVID than Florida did because he was the fourth largest number of deaths in the country, and Florida was number three. Well, guess what? Florida is the third most populous state in the union, and New York is the fourth most populous state in the union. Texas is second, California first, and if you look at it, it was exactly that way. Number one number of deaths was, te was California, number two, Texas, number three, Florida, number four, New York. So what was the point, Mr. President, other than you decided that Andrew Cuomo was the example of right. what we should have all done as a country? No, no, we shouldn't have. And, 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 and when they had the exchange on, on, on you need eight years or four years, and Trump said, I need all you, know, all you needed six months, then why didn't you, DeSantis basically said, well, then why didn't you get it all done in six months? You had four years. The wall still isn't built. And so, right. I, you know, it's highly entertaining. I'm not certain how illuminating it is, but it's highly entertaining. I just don't think you can touch Trump on judges, and I don't think you can touch him on the wall. We all know he no. repurposed defense spending to do it. We all know uh, Paul Ryan's house gave him $1.8 billion when he needed 10. So, there's a lot more to it. Uh, we'll see what happens with voters. So let's roll in some of the polls. Trump with a pretty big lead, as you see, in the general and in Iowa and in New Hampshire. When the first polls come out with, with DeSantis officially in the race, what's that gap going to look like, does Carl Rove think? You know, it, 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 first of all, it doesn't matter what they look like now. Take, for example, Iowa. Uh, interesting piece by Dan Balls in the Washington Post. He interviewed uh, the, the woman, Ann Seltzer, who does the Iowa poll, which has been pretty good. And she pointed out that, that in, in the last three Republican contests, three out of the last four Republican contests, the, the ultimate winner was like in single digits in October, November, because Iowans make up their minds late. So let's not, you know, let's, it's interesting to see movement. Let's right. see if these race, if these numbers tighten. But the key thing is going to be how strong an organization do you have in Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina? And second of all, do oh, you get on go. the debate stage? Here we go. Here's it. Because right now, today, we can be pretty well guaranteed that, that you got, you got, you got two things you got to do. You got to get a certain percentage in national polls, and you have to have roughly, it, look, it sounds like they're going to require 40,000 donors. Trump is going to be in the debate stage. He's going to have both of those. De DeSantis is going to be there in all likelihood. I think also Haley and Scott are going to meet Huge. both of those tests. And now, but then... Then we've got some challenge candidates. Is Aza Hutchison going to get 40,000 donors? Is, uh, is Vivek going to get 40,000 donors? We don't know. And then we've got three that are going to enter this week. 
Pence and Christie, I suspect they're going to be able to meet those targets. Uh, the interesting one is Doug Burgum from North, Car uh, from North Dakota. Got a lot of personal wealth, so he's not going to lack for money. But North Dakota isn't a very big state, so the question is, is he going to be able to develop that number of 40,000 donors by the time they get into the August time at uh, the August uh, uh, debate stage? But, you know, this is why it's going to be so interesting, because the, the, this, I think, is going to depend to a very large degree on how well you do on something we don't get a lot of you know, new numbers on, building an organization, and how well do you do in debates and in the public presentations in these early primary states where we will get a firsthand experience within the debates and we'll get a lot of information about how the candidates are messaging in these early states. And I would have to say, I think this seems to be the best Trump team so far, and I thought he did very well with Sean Hannity, very composed, uh, very comfortable with himself, even self-deprecating for the first time as a candidate when he talked about how slow he went down that ramp. I thought, man, that, that, he's just having fun. Yeah. Chris Lasavita, Susie Wiles, and John Brabender are pros. Trump is wise to have gotten them aboard. We'll see how long they last, because he's had a habit of running through <laughs> campaign managers and consultants. I've heard. Uh, Carl, thanks so much. Always great. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.